Doot dee doo, just checking the mail. <laughs> No this is my new house. No, thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brian. <laughs>so it's time for a long overdue project here which is a delivery box that will hold up uh, better than our Tupperware tote that we put out a while back that we knew the Sun would eat up and it eventually did so the idea here is to put this together with some scrap material just things we've got laying around don't want to put a lot of money into it um, so we should be able to do it with just uh, stuff that we've got here on hand already I've got a drawing here in SketchUp, not that that's super necessary, but it helped figure out kind of what sizes of pieces of wood I would need so that I could go pick through my scraps and get the best use out of what I've got without cutting up too much, um, you know, full-size lumber. So so this is what it looks like. Basically, I'm just going to build a frame box out of all 2x4s, uh, and I'll throw a piece of plywood on the bottom of it, and then I'm going to cover the whole thing with some... Um, metal roofing material, the corrugated metal. So, and I've got all that kind of laying around. All I really need is, I mean, screw fasteners and, and that's about it. I don't really have to buy anything for this. So, like I said, not real pretty, but it should get the job done. So we're gonna, we're gonna treat all of this wood, all of these, these two by fours, in a sense, we're gonna shoshugi bond them. So we're gonna burn them and then we're gonna uh, cover them with boiled linseed oil. So that should give them a little bit of protection. Although the whole thing will be covered by corrugated metal, it shouldn't see a whole lot of water uh, on, on these pieces of wood, but uh, it gives us a chance to practice. We've actually never done the, the wood burning technique yet. And uh, just in case any water does get to the wood, it should make it last a little longer and maybe prevent some insects as well. So, so we'll give that a try too. So let's get going. So after cutting all the pieces to size to match the uh, SketchUp drawing there, the next step is just to give it a burn, which you can see me doing here. There's nothing real special about this. It's just a matter of how slow you move over the wood. and That's just a cheap torch from uh, Harbor Freight attached to a propane tank. So here you can see it's got a little bit of a shine to it after you burn it. Um, different woods and different spots on the wood will take it a little bit differently, but it looks a little shiny. And the next step is to give it a brush. Um, I was using just kind of a scrub brush here. I eventually switched to a wire brush, which was a lot better. It held up for a lot longer, but you can see it kind of dulls it down like that. And then uh, after you get it scrubbed off, uh, the idea is to then uh, cover it with uh, some sort of protectant like a boiled linseed oil or a polyurethane, depending on really how much you want to spend on that step. Uh, linseed oil is, I think, a little cheaper. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. So the idea between the, between the flame and the, and the linseed oil, so the flame, the idea is to close up kind of the uh, cells of the wood there to give you some protection from weather and uh, uh, pests. And uh, then the linseed oil just kind of seals it. So that's essentially all you're going for there. The, the rest of it is really just about look. You know, you can burn that kind of as little or as much as you want. Um, if you don't burn it enough, you might not get those cells closed up. So you do want to give it a, a pretty decent burn, but you know, every wood will take it a little bit different. But after you're done with that, then this is what you're left with. And you're ready to put that all together. You've got some protected wood now. Okay, so now that I've got these pieces all cut and sealed with boiled linseed oil, and burnt um, shoshugi bun. Um, I'm just going to start assembling the frame of the box. This happens to be the lid uh, and then they'll be covered with the corrugated metal. Uh, I'm just going, going to toe screw. I don't even know if that's a term. I know toenail is, but uh, essentially I'm just going to put these these things together and just at an angle just screw them together at all the at all the corners. So um, I don't know if that's the most secure connection or not, but this is really just a quick and dirty build. Uh, it's not going to see a whole lot of stress or anything. And even if at some point I have to sort of redo it, it's not that big of a deal. So, so I'm just trying to throw it together quick. So that's what I'm doing. So as I said a second ago there, I'm not sure that this is the best way to actually put these together. As a matter of fact, I know it's kind of not. Uh, one of the issues with toe nailing, toe screwing this way is to pre-drill these holes. I've 
I've broken several drill bits this way, so I know that's a drawback for sure. And it can be hard to hold things in place to put things together like this. So I'm actually uh, looking for some suggestions in the comment section below, if you like, for better ways to, to connect boards like this. Um, basically, when you can't screw through the end of one board and into another. Um, I'm aware of a few techniques, but I haven't actually used them, so I'm not sure what to use when. And some of them do involve some special tools and things. Um, I know that one is uh, pocket joinery, which I know my neighbor Bill is very fond of, and I believe it's a, a really good method. Uh, it does involve a jig that, that's a little bit of money, but I'd be willing to invest in it if it was a better way to put these things together. So if you have any f suggestions for how to do this better, Please let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. piece I can because this is the only piece of metal, and I didn't even realize it when I pulled it out. It has holes in it. So it has a couple of holes here and a couple of holes here. Yeah. But I think there's mm -hmm. a piece that I can cut out that will fit in between those two holes. Right. So I'm going to do that one first. So now I'm just going to attach these hinges on the back to put the top on the box. And uh, I'll start off with one screw on each hinge, one screw on each side of each hinge, make sure it moves all right. Okay, there's a start in each hinge. Let's see if it moves. Looks all right. Let's put the rest of the screws in. All right, there's the hinges. So now I'm just gonna attach these metal panels um, on the top. I'm gonna use the, just one bump of overlap in the middle, which will let them hang off the edge by you know, a half inch or an inch. Give me a little bit of a shelf so that the water doesn't get up in. Uh, I'm gonna butt them up to the front and they hang off a little bit off the back just so again, water can't get in there. Maybe about an inch of overhang. Um, and on the others, on the front and the back where the panels overlap, I'm gonna overlap them a little farther so that they come flush to the edges. They don't have to overlap, they don't have to hang, overhang the edges. So uh, that's it. So attach these panels. So I just realized a mistake I made. These metal pieces that go on the back here, they can't butt all the way up against this top piece or else it won't open. So I only left about an inch of overhang back here, thinking that if a, another piece butted up to it, that would be plenty. But because it can't butt up all the way to it, 
when I put this on here, there's basically a spot for the water to go in. So I'm still gonna attach these. I can do one of two things. I can either replace these top panels with panels that are a few inches longer, or I can un just, just undo these top screws and take an extra strip of this material, which I have, and just add another maybe four inches or something like that. So I'll think about that after this. So this is probably what I should have done. I just should have had that panel be maybe a good three or four inches longer. So I think what I might do is just take the leftovers that I've already got and just add them on. So the, since the water runs down, it shouldn't be an issue with water going inside here. So that should work. It's not super pretty. The best, the, the right thing to do probably would be to take these panels off and make them four inches longer, but I don't necessarily want to waste all this material, so I'm just going to use this to extend it. I won't have, I won't have the same problem in the front as in the back for two reasons. Number one, I've got to hang a, an overhang in the front because I let the lid overhang about a good two inches. Um, and that's not as far as I need to let the back now overhang, but the difference is the back is sloped up and the panel can't be you know, butt it up close to it. This panel can come all the way kind of up under this lid and the lid slopes down. So because of those two things, this one's gonna be fine, but the back has to be modified. All right, there's the front, back, and top. So now I just need to cut the side panels, need to cut them at an angle. And uh, so the side panels can go all the way up against this overhang. So we shouldn't have the issue like we had in the back. So still, I think the side panels will be all right. I'll just get them up tight, as up as close as I can to this little overhang. Should cover them fine. And then I'll add an extra piece on the back for to cover the back. So, there was one thing I didn't think of. Because this sheet metal extends up beside the lid, but obviously can't connect to it. If the lid is the slightest bit out of whack when you put it down, it'll actually land on that sheet metal. So I'm just gonna bend that sheet metal back a tiny bit just to stay out of the way. Okay. I'm just gonna add some extensions onto the back there, like I said, but other than that, should be good to go.